Listen, if you've been eating less, exercising more, cutting carbs, but the scale still won't budge, this isn't about willpower. It's about biology. Your body is working against you, and it's not your fault. Most people think fat loss is simple. Calories in, calories out. But research shows that your hormones, stress levels, sleep quality, and even meal timing can completely shut down fat burning, even in a calorie deficit. Today, I'm walking you through seven fat loss mistakes that are quietly sabotaging your progress. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly what to fix so your body can finally start releasing stored fat. If you're over 35, if you've tried multiple diets and nothing sticks, or if your metabolism feels broken, this message is for you. Let's get into it. Mistake number one, you're eating too little for too long. Sounds backwards, right? You're trying to lose fat, so you slash calories hard. Maybe 1,200 calories a day, maybe less. You white-knuckle it for weeks. At first, it works. You drop a few pounds. But then the scale freezes. Your energy crashes. You're cold all the time. Your hair starts thinning. Here's what's happening. When you cut calories too drastically for too long, your body doesn't think, Great! Let's burn fat! It thinks, We're starving. Shut everything down. Your metabolism slows. Your body starts breaking down muscle instead of fat because muscle is expensive to maintain. This is called adaptive thermogenesis. Research from the National Institutes of Health shows that when people restrict calories by 50% for just one week, their metabolism drops by an average of 178 calories per day, beyond what's expected from weight loss alone. That metabolic slowing can predict how much weight you'll lose over six weeks of dieting. Another study published in the British Journal of Nutrition found that during extreme calorie restriction, metabolic rate dropped by 469 to 635 calories per day, more than predicted. And these reductions persisted even after people stabilized their weight. So what should you do instead? Eat enough to support your metabolism. For most people, that's at least 1,500 to 1,800 calories daily, depending on size and activity. You want a moderate deficit, about 300 to 500 calories below maintenance, not 800. And here's the key. Take diet breaks. Every 8 to 12 weeks, bring calories back up to maintenance for 1 to 2 weeks. Let your hormones recover. Then, return to a deficit. Your body isn't the enemy. Treat it right and it will work with you. Mistake number two, you're doing too much cardio and not enough strength training. I see this constantly. Someone wants to lose fat, so they start running every day, an hour on the treadmill, burning calories, sweating, feeling productive. But here's the problem. Cardio burns calories while you're doing it. The second you stop, the burn stops. And if you're doing too much cardio, especially in a calorie deficit, your body starts breaking down muscle to fuel those long sessions. When you lose muscle, your metabolism slows even more because muscle burns calories at rest. Fat doesn't. A study from Wake Forest University followed 249 adults in their 60s for 18 months. They compared three groups, diet only, diet plus walking, and diet plus weight training. The results? Both exercise groups lost similar amounts of fat, about 16-17 pounds. But muscle loss was dramatically different. The cardio group lost about 4 pounds of muscle. The strength training group? Only 2 pounds. The cardio group lost 20% of their weight from muscle, while the strength training group lost just 10%. Here's what healthy, lean people do differently. They prioritize strength training, lifting weights, resistance bands, body weight exercises, anything that challenges muscles and forces them to adapt. You don't need to become a bodybuilder, but two to four days per week of strength work will preserve muscle, keep your metabolism strong, and improve how your body looks as you lose fat. Cardio? Still good. Walking, cycling, swimming, all great for heart health, but it should support your fat loss, not be the foundation. Think of it this way. Cardio rents results. Strength training buys them. Mistake number three, you're ignoring sleep and recovery. How many hours did you sleep last night? Be honest. If it's less than seven, your body is working against you. Here's why. When you don't sleep enough, two hormones go haywire, ghrelin and leptin. 
Ghrelin is your hunger hormone. It increases when you're sleep-deprived, making you ravenous all day. Leptin is your fullness hormone. It decreases, so you never feel satisfied. A study from Stanford University examined over 1,000 people and found those who slept less than 5 hours had 15% more ghrelin and 16% less leptin compared to those who slept 8 hours. That's a hormonal double punch that drives overeating, but it gets worse. Poor sleep raises cortisol, your stress hormone, which signals your body to hold on to fat, especially around your midsection. A University of Chicago study put people on the same calorie-restricted diet but varied their sleep. One group slept 8.5 hours, the other slept 5.5 hours. Both groups lost weight. But the sleep-deprived group lost 55% less fat and 60% more muscle. Same calories, different sleep. Completely different results. Your body burns fat while you sleep. It repairs tissue. It regulates hunger. But only if you give it time. If you're trying to out-diet bad sleep, you're fighting a losing battle. Aim for 7-9 to nine hours of quality sleep per night. Keep your room cool and dark. Limit screens an hour before bed. Maintain a consistent sleep schedule, even on weekends. Sleep isn't optional. It's when your body becomes the fat-burning machine you want it to be. Treat it like medicine, because it is. Mistake number four. You're drinking your calories. Smoothies, juice, protein shakes, fancy lattes. Sports drinks. You think you're being healthy but your body doesn't register liquid calories the same way it registers solid food. Here's why. When you chew food, your brain gets signals that you're eating. Your stomach stretches. Satiety hormones kick in. You feel full. When you drink calories, that signal is weak. You can down 400 calories in a smoothie and be hungry an hour later. Research in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition showed people who consumed liquid calories ate significantly more total calories throughout the day compared to those who ate solid food. Sugar-sweetened drinks are even worse. Soda, sweetened coffee, and fruit juices spike your blood sugar fast. Your pancreas dumps insulin. Your blood sugar crashes. Now you're hungry again, craving more sugar. It's a hormonal roller coaster that keeps you stuck in hunger and fat storage. What should you do? Drink water, black coffee, and unsweetened tea. If you want a smoothie, make it a meal with protein, healthy fat, and fiber, not a snack. And if you drink alcohol, your body prioritizes metabolizing alcohol over burning fat. Every drink is time your body isn't accessing stored fat for energy. I'm not saying never have a drink or smoothie, just be honest about the cost. Healthy, lean people don't drink their calories. They eat them. Make that shift, and you'll see results faster. Mistake number five. You're stressing your way into fat storage. Stress doesn't just make you feel bad. It physically changes how your body handles food. When you're chronically stressed, work deadlines, family drama, financial pressure, even overtraining at the gym, your body releases cortisol. Cortisol is a survival hormone designed to help you fight or run from danger. But in today's world, we're not running from predators. We're sitting in traffic, checking emails, scrolling bad news, Chronic stress equals chronic cortisol. And here's what cortisol does. It increases blood sugar, promotes fat storage, especially around your belly, and makes you crave high-calorie comfort foods. Research from Yale University found that women with high cortisol levels stored significantly more abdominal fat, even when calorie intake was controlled. Your body literally holds onto fat because it thinks you're in danger. And the worst part? You can be doing everything else right, eating clean, exercising, sleeping well, but if stress is high, fat loss stalls. So what do you do? Manage stress like it's part of your fitness plan. Deep breathing, meditation, walking in nature, journaling, yoga. Even five minutes daily can lower cortisol. And here's a simple one. Eat in a calm state. Don't eat while driving, working, or watching stressful news. Sit down, breathe. Let your body shift into rest and digest mode. When your nervous system feels safe, your body is far more willing to release stored fat. This isn't woo-woo. This is biology. Healthy people don't just eat better. They live calmer, and their bodies reward them for it. Mistake number six. You're not tracking anything. You think you're eating healthy, 
you feel like you're in a deficit. But feelings aren't facts. Research shows people underestimate how much they eat by 30 to 50 percent. That small handful of almonds, 200 calories. That tiny drizzle of olive oil, 120 calories. That latte, 300 calories. Those weekend meals, easily 1,000 plus extra calories you didn't count. You're not failing. You're flying blind. A study in the American Journal of Preventive Medicine found that people who tracked food intake lost twice as much weight as those who didn't. Not because tracking is magic, because awareness changes behavior. When you see it written down, you make better choices. You notice patterns. You stop mindless snacking. You realize that healthy meal is stalling progress. You don't have to track forever. Track for two to four weeks. Use an app or notebook. Just get the data. And don't just track food. Track sleep, stress levels, energy, and how you feel after meals. Your body gives you feedback every day. Most people just aren't listening. Healthy people don't guess. They measure, adjust, and improve. You can't manage what you don't monitor. Mistake number seven. You're eating the right foods at the wrong time. Here's something most people don't know. The order you eat your food matters. If you start your meal with carbs, bread, rice, pasta, your blood sugar spikes fast. Insulin floods in. And insulin is a fat storage hormone. When insulin is high, fat burning shuts off. But if you eat protein and fiber first, everything changes. A study from Cornell University showed that people who ate vegetables and protein before carbs had significantly lower blood sugar and insulin spikes, even when eating the same meal. Your body handles glucose better. You stay fuller longer. You avoid that post-meal crash that makes you reach for snacks an hour later. Here's the simple rule. Veggies and protein first. Carbs last. Salad before pasta. Then kill chicken before rice. Eggs before toast. It sounds small, but this one shift can improve insulin sensitivity, reduce cravings, and help your body access stored fat for energy. And here's another timing trick. Don't eat late at night. Your body's ability to process glucose drops in the evening. Research published in Cell Metabolism found that people who ate the same meal at 8 p.m. versus 8 a.m. had higher blood sugar and stored more fat from the evening meal. Your metabolism has a rhythm. Work with it, not against it. Eat bigger meals earlier in the day. Keep dinner lighter. Stop eating two, three hours before bed. This is what people with healthy metabolisms do naturally. Now you know why it works. Let's recap the seven fat loss mistakes. Eating too little for too long. Too much cardio. Not enough strength. Ignoring sleep. Drinking your calories. Chronic stress. Not tracking anything. Eating at the wrong times. If you're making even two of these mistakes, that's enough to stall your progress. But here's the good news. Now you know. You don't need perfection. Just stop doing things that work against you. Your body wants to burn fat. But you have to create the right environment, hormonally, metabolically, and mentally. Pick one mistake. Fix it this week. Drop a comment. Type yes if this made sense. Share this with someone struggling with fat loss. If you want more research-backed health advice, hit subscribe. I'm here every week breaking down what actually works. Take care of your body. It's the only one you've got.